So this guy was one of the most durable and respected francophone goalies over a quarter century of play. Now, he played the elite level uh, in the Quebec uh, Midget uh, Leagues, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, the minor leagues, the NHL, nationally and internationally. A very congenial guy, good with the media, good with the fans, good with his teammates, and basically uh, his, his career in the NHL started on a high note and continued to uh, become legendary as the years went on, and he still basically was using the tools of ignorance to make uh, the best shot of uh, for his team to win. So today we're going to talk about the great goalie, Daniel Bethion. Now, Daniel J. Bethion was born in Longueuil, Quebec, January 26, 1966. Played in the NHL for Winnipeg, Minnesota, L.A., Boston, and Ottawa. Now, his nickname was abandoned, and there was a reason. He was a standout goalie in junior hockey after an elite Quebec uh, midget uh, career, mostly playing for Drumville and Chicoutimi of the Q. Now, during the 85 season, Bethion won 40 games for the Saguenay, a feat made more impressive when you factor the team, won 41 games that season. So he won 98% of the games. Now, 85, Ottawa was supposed to, was not, was in the league at the time, but uh, Winnipeg took a chance, uh, took him 16 overall, which uh, was part of a crowded cage uh, in uh, in the franchise's uh, history. I think there were seven goalies uh, fighting for spots at one time for the first season he broke in. Now, he played his five-year junior hockey and then made his NHL debut that spring <coughs> during the NHL playoffs. Now, the Jets had faced the Flames in the first round of the... Uh, uh, 86 uh, uh, post season uh, with veteran goal uh, goaltender Dan Bouchard started game one but was relieved by future Montreal Canadian Brian Hayward after giving up five goals. Hayward now started game two but after surrendering six goals he was yanked and the U.S. standout Mac Baron finished up the game. However for game three with the Jets on the verge of elimination uh, management took a chance and Bethio made his NHL debut in Dazzled, making 39 saves before losing in overtime when Hall of Famer, the great Lanny McDonald, found the back of the net to win the series. Now, in the offseason, the Jets acquired Steve Penny from the Habs and he was expected to be their starter, but Bear Thielman and fellow rookie, again another goalie in the Winnipeg system, Eldon Pokey Reddick, seized the job and fuller formed a solid platoon, known as Pokey and the Bandit. Now, uh, it played on the popular movie series, Smoking the Bandit. Now, that season, Bertillon played a post an impressive 1873 rookie campaign, uh, and he's during his second season in the NHL. He got the starting job in Winnipeg, and he posted a career high, 22 wins. However, the following season, he struggled and ended up spending the bulk of the year tolling in the minors while Pokey took over the starter's job with the Jets and veteran uh, Alain Chevrier and rookie Bob Asensa supported them. So Winnipeg, there's like 9 or 10 goalies in the mix during his career with them. Now, Berthio eventually was back with the Jets for the 89-90 season, but Asensa be- took over the number one role. Now, Berthio came under fire for uh, some, uh, unfortunately, uh, off-ice incidents for allegedly swearing at children seeking his autograph. On January 22nd, in the midst of the scandal, uh, January 22, 1990, he was traded to the Stars for future considerations. Now, Mike Smith, GM of the Jets, said uh, Bertillon's trade was related to his off-ice actions. The goalie later apologized on television for swearing at autograph seekers. Then a day later, denied the incident took place, and he said he'd been ordered to apologize by team management. Now, according to my media pals and sources out, out west, he did do something, but we're not really sure if he swore at the kids or basically told them to bugger off. So, it's six of one and a half dozen of the other. Now, with the Stars, goalie John K- Casey handled the bulk of the duties uh, for Minnesota. So, Bertillon appeared in just five games for the Stars that season, managing just one win and a mediocre 3.5 goals against average. Now, prior to the start of the 91 training camp, Bertillon was traded to LA, to LA Kings for, for, uh, uh, for Craig Duncanson. Now, with the Kings, Bertillon served as backup to veteran Kelly Rooney and performed well enough to win 20 games for the club. However, his improved play didn't last. In the next season, 91-92, he struggled posting a 4.04 goals against average while managing just seven wins in 19 games. His uneven play ultimately cost him his job, and he was shipped to Boston 
for future considerations in early 1992. Now, because the Bruins had Andy Moog firmly entrenched in her starter role with veteran Rajan Lemla as his backup, uh, factors turned but when Lemla suffered a groin injury and were in need of uh, some depth. Now, the Bruins did bring up Bertillon, but he did little to help, winning just one of eight starts he made for Boston. During the offseason, the Bruins traded him back to Winnipeg for veteran Doug Evans. Now, Bertio started the 93 season playing for EC Grasse in Austria, but on September 15, 92, he signed as a free agent with the Senators. The first year, Senators uh, lead heavily on goaltender Peter Sidorfikitz, and while he feared admirably considering a heavy fire took his night near Greece, his backup, veteran Steve Weeks, was horribly overmatched, posting a 7-point due tree goals against average. Now, when Berthio was brought in to back up Sidorkovich, he appeared in 25 games, posting a rough 2-17-1 record for the lowly Senators. In the offseason, the Senators upgrading their goaltending by acquiring Craig Billington and then promoted rookie Darren Madley, which pushed both Berthio out of the crease. He made one appearance for Ottawa in 94, and though it lasted one minute, he surrendered two goals and two shots, giving him 120 Goals against average for the season and a zero save percentage. Late in the season, he was traded to the Red Wings for Steve Conroy, but never suited up for the club, making his final NHL appearance his one-minute stint for the Senators early that year. And all, Bertillon played in 250 regular, 15 regular season games during his career with an 81, 91, and 21 record with a 3.67 goals against average and 14 NHL playoff games all in Winnipeg. Now, after he making his final NHL appearance with the Senators during the 94 season, he spent most of the remainder's career in the ECHL with the Ronica Express, where he spent seven seasons in three stints and often split duties with good friend <coughs> Dave Gangel. He also played for the ECHL's Wheeling Thunderbirds, the Detroit Vipers of the International Hockey League, and the Central Texas Stampede of the WPHL, where he won most outstanding goaltender honors for the 97 campaign. He played his last season with the Port Euro Beacons of the UHL before retiring in 2005 after a quarter century at the elite level as a goalie. Now, Bertio also played professional roller hockey, tending goal for Roller Hockey Internationals, New Jersey Rock and Rollers in 94, Motor City Mass Mustangs in 95, and Philadelphia Bulldogs in 96. Bertio was also the assistant coach of the Roanoke Valley Wright Vipers in the UHL uh, uh, at the start of the 2006 season, but on February 6, 2006, it was announced that Bertie Owen would become the head coach, replacing Jim Wiley, who lost his job at uh, midseason. He later coached the Virginia Military Institute hockey team. Now, Bertie Owen uh, has lived most of his uh, post-retirement life in Hardy, Virginia, where he owns and operates Captain Burt's Fishing Charters on Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia. A freshwater striped bass fishery. Uh, he is married and with uh, three sons. Now, roller hockey uh, inter uh, uh, international, uh, very very interesting thing, because he would he was still playing major pro hockey, but was still with the roller hockey. But his best seasons were with Roanoke, like in consecutive years between '98 and '02, he won 17, 18, 21, 26, and 23 games. Greensbury won 30 games in 03 with a stellar 2.090 average. And uh, uh, it's, quite, it's quite interesting on Bertillon because a lot of people felt that the Montreal Canadiens may want to give him a chance, but you don't really hurt him. Well, you probably noticed already. 5'9", 170 pounds. That wouldn't work with the, uh, the very strong Eastern Conference uh, squads. But Bertillon, for what he did and what he was, to put a quarter century on the ice. And uh, Longue uh, hockey players are tremendous, tremendous uh, what they call cerebral players and very, very dedicated. And wherever Daniel went uh, again, uh, that incident with the, the allegedly yelling at the fans, that was very rare. I would see reports from Ronicky on the local media saying how much the uh, the fans and the public loved him because, you know, good, handsome young uh, Frenchman, uh, good, with the, good with the women, good with the men, you know, an all-around good player. So that's a legend of Daniel Bertillon. Thanks for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, in the States, go out and vote. No matter who you vote for in the next two days, a lot of elections going on. In Canada, get ready for a warm front in the Maritimes, which means probably no snow for the two first two weeks of November. That's like not only Indian summer, that could be summer summer. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's six months early. 
Have a good day. Bye.